Hello everyone, and once again, welcome to Maytech. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these laser cut boxes with these cool integrated hinges. These boxes require absolutely no hinge hardware, as it is literally made out of the same material you'll be making the box out of. I'm also going to show you how to dress these boxes up with a Norse theme, and we'll be staining it using some water-based stains. This is the second style of box I've done in a series of box tutorials, and I'll have more box tutorials to come, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all my latest releases. Alright, let's jump into this tutorial. Let's just have a quick look at the material needed for this project. I'll be using some 1 8 or 3 mm Baltic birch plywood. You also might want to consider some sort of clasp for your box. I'll be using this style here that I got off of Amazon. A clasp, of course, is optional for this box, but I do think it gives it a cool added little feature. The first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to boxes.py. This site lets you generate files for all different types and sorts of boxes that are meant to be cut on a laser engraver. For our box today, you're going to want to open up the box tab, scroll down to integrated hinge box, and click on that. I've already went ahead and preloaded all my settings into the configuration, and I'll run you through that now. I have my hinge strength set at 75, my pin height to 2, and my play to 0.1. I have my inner width set to 120, my inner depth set to 120, and my height set to 75, and these are millimeters. I also have outside measurements checked, and I have the inner height of my lid set to 30 millimeters. I've set the thickness of my stock to 3.2 millimeters. The file to be exported as an SVG, zero tabs. I've left the debug unchecked and set the reference to zero. I've set my burn to 0 0.07, which is kind of like laser kerf. I've gone ahead and hit the generate button. And you can see here the SVG file that the site has produced for me. Note that these are just my settings. And you'll of course have to play around with the settings to fit your machine and whatever material you'll be using. I'm going to go ahead and save this SVG file to my computer and then open it up in Lightburn. Here's what the file looks like opened up in Flightburn. I've of course already went ahead and laid this out to best fit my plywood piece. I've also went ahead and laid out the Norse design elements that we're going to engrave into this box on another layer. For the engraving of the elements, we'll be doing that at a speed of 200 and a power of 80 on my 50 watt machine. We'll have the line speed set to 15 and the line power set to 12. And we'll have the kerf offset set to a negative 0.1. We'll be doing the cutting at a speed of 8 and a power of 55. I'll be including a link where you can download all these files in the description box below. Alright, let's go ahead and laser these projects. After the lasering process was done, I went ahead and sanded each piece with 220 grit sandpaper to remove any char or burn marks from the laser. Before we start staining these, I'm going to go ahead and add a coat of Minwax water-based pre-stain to each one of these pieces. This will allow the stain to be applied evenly to the wood, as opposed to kind of the blotchy effect that birch typically does if it doesn't have a pre-stain. Obviously, if you're going to use an oil-based stain on your box, you will want to get an oil-based pre-stain. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a coat of this to each side of each piece with a small piece of sponge, and then I'm going to let it dry. After it's dry, we'll be back and we'll start the staining process. In order to get the effect I want, I'm going to go ahead and use two types of salmon brand water-based stains on each one of these pieces of plywood. I'm first going to apply a dark walnut colored stain. After this first stain application is dry, I'm going to go ahead and sand some of it out with some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm then going to come back and apply a coat of amaretto colored stain. To apply the stain, I'm going to simply use a piece of sponge and wipe it onto each piece, and then I'm going to wipe any excess off using a piece of white rag.
Once the dark walnut stain color is dry, you're going to get a look that's something like this. You can, of course, leave it like this, but I'm going to go ahead and sand this out, and then we'll be back to apply another color of stain. So after sanding each piece, the plywood's going to have a look of something like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply a coat of the amaretto colored stain to each one of these pieces. I'm going to apply it the same way as I did the dark walnut stain, by simply wiping it on with a sponge and wiping off any excess with a piece of rag. Now that the second application of stain is dry, it's time to go ahead and assemble this box. To assemble my box, I'll be using some CA glue. I'll be using a pin that's mounted on the handle of an old X-Acto knife to apply the glue to each one of the finger joints. I'll also be spraying on some 70% rubbing alcohol that I have here in this little bottle. The rubbing alcohol will act as an accelerator for the CA glue. Once the boxes are all assembled and the CA glue is dried, I'm going to go ahead and add a finish to these boxes. I'll be using a spray-on lacquer to finish my boxes from Old Master, and it'll be in a satin. You can of course use any finish that you prefer. I prefer to use a lacquer as I find it gives the best looking finish. Once the lacquer is dried, it's time to complete the box by applying the hasp. This particular hasp I'll be using comes in two pieces and is installed using these little screws. When you're installing a hasp, the first thing you're going to want to do is clamp the two pieces of boxes together so nothing shifts on you in the installation process. Now I'm going to take the hasp and line it up on the box exactly where I want it. I am then going to take a pencil and trace out the screw holes only for the top piece of the hasp. I'm then going to go ahead and use this little mini hand drill to drill some guide holes for the larger drill bit. Once the top guide holes are made, I'm going to go ahead and unclamp this box. I'm then going to take a piece of scrap wood and place it on the back section of where I'm going to drill out my holes. I am then going to go and drill out my holes to the desired size. I've placed the piece of scrap wood there to make sure there's no tear out on the back side from the drill. Next, I'm going to reclamp the box together and install the top section of the hasp. Once the top section of the hasp has been installed, I'm going to line up the bottom section of the hasp and trace out the screw holes with the pencil. I am then going to go ahead and repeat the drilling and installation process for the lower part of the hasp. Now you might be wondering why I went this kind of roundabout way to install the hasp, and that is because I found that this two-stage installation of the hasp gives a tight and secure latching to the hardware. Now, depending on the type of screws you've used on the box, you may notice that the end of the screws are poking out the back of the box. I'm just going to go ahead and use a little Dremel grinding wheel to grind these down so they're not poking out. So there you go folks, that's how you make a laser cut box with integrated hinges. Now, if you want to know how I made these cool little Norse themed keychains, I do have a video on that that I will link in the description. I sure do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions on this tutorial, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. 
Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and remember to hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks for watching everyone.